some of you all don't have a dependable mother and father. Like, they may be there, but they may not show too much love and attention. They may... One day they may, one day they might, like, it is unpredictable. Or you may have a dad that may not show up so much. Imagine how that really feels. Imagine not receiving the love of your parents. Like, imagine not really being able to rely on your parents. How do you think that would make you feel? In some cases, it may make a person feel anxious, afraid, like, will my parents meet my needs? Like, uh, will I have food? Uh, will I get clothes or new clothes or new shoes? Like, I believe that would make a person very anxious. And also, probably feel very unloved. So, what do you think a person like that will do? They will look for security. They will look for the love. They will look for attention. I think this is one of the reasons why you may see a woman jump from man to man to man, or a man jump from woman to woman. Like they may get with people they probably should not get with. Or they may behave in ways that will turn off the people they get with. Imagine like constantly looking for love, constantly looking for attention, but at the same time, you are kind of damaged. Like, you fear abandonment so much. You fear being left by your partner so much to where you may continue to ask, are you going to leave me? Are you cheating on me? Like, you may not say it directly, but you may do it in undercover ways. Like, you may want the passwords to their social media, like their Facebook account, their Yahoo account. Like you may want to uh, do something on their phone to where you can track where they are at because you did not really get that security when you was younger. You fear being alone. So when you get into a relationship, it probably places more stress upon you, which is kind of interesting. You may even behave in a manipulative way to get security or in your own way of thinking security. You may act so, act so toxically if that is a word, to where it really turns off the other person. It's not that you really are trying to turn off the other person. It is just that you were not really fulfilled when you were a child. Your parents didn't really do a good job in raising you. So in a sense, what you didn't receive when you were a child, you look for it in the people you choose to be with. So now you have this long line 
of failed relationships. You may blame it on the other person, and in some cases, it may be the other person, but chances are it is you as well. Stop looking for people to make you happy. Like, if you have a particular mindset, if you go about things in a particular way, how can you depend on someone else for happiness when maybe the things you are doing, maybe the way you are behaving, maybe the way you are thinking is causing you unhappiness? So if you get with someone, you know, you may depend on that person for happiness. And when you surprise, surprise, when you don't receive that happiness, you may put the blame on the other person like, hey, you are not making me happy. How can they? If you have stinking thinking, if you are so anxious and afraid of the future, uh, I don't think this person loves me. I don't think this person cares about me. Like if you look at something and I guess purposely misinterpret their actions, take a small thing and create a scenario in your mind that isn't even true, but you act as if it is true, how are you going to be happy? How can you place that, like, hey, I want you to make me happy even though I am doing things to cause myself to be unhappy. It is counter, I believe it is counterproductive. If you want to be happy, look for yourself to be happy actually look for jesus christ to help you to be happy but you have to put in the work you have to put in the work how can i toss myself in a trash can where there is filth and and uh things that stink how can i toss myself in a trash can but expect you to make me smell good i'm not i am choosing to not leave the trash can but i am telling you you should make me smell good but the person is telling you okay get out of the trash can take a shower put on some deodorant and let's say you say no i am not going to do it i am going to stay in this trash can i am going to rub filth all over my face all over my body but you need to make me smell good okay you should get out the trash can and then what do you do you may say uh you don't understand me <laughs> why are you being so controlling you should accept me the way that i am but you are telling me to make you smell good but you are choosing to you are telling me to make you smell good but you are choosing to stay in the trash can it makes totally no sense but this is how some people are what you suffered when you were a child whether it is whether whether you are doing it on purpose or not you are in a sense punishing other people for what you have suffered but at the same time you want them to not abandon you you want them to stick with you you want them to stay with you when you are constantly how can i say this in a nice way or a good way when you are constantly sabotaging sabotaging the relationship 
Like for instance, let's say that you are hanging off of a ledge with uh, your hand. A person is trying to pull you up, but you are pushing them away and lifting up your own fingers. <laughs> help me, help me, help me, help me. Ah, I fell down. That is what you are doing. But let me stop here, though. May God bless us.